Good afternoon and welcome everybody. My name is Alastair Pym. I'm the VP of Innovation and Partnerships at NECC, the Northeast Clean Energy Council. And I'm very happy to welcome you all to the fifth and final of our 2018 series of five webinars on investor and corporate party partner readiness, which is organized by Navigate, one of our innovation programs here at NECC. Uh, this webinar series is part of NECC and Navigate's mission to support clean tech entrepreneurs and ecosystem stakeholders such as incubators and accelerators and other innovation organizations located across the Northeast. So that means the six New England states and New York for us by providing them not only with learning opportunities and access to experts, but also connections to investors, corporates and customers to help them start, grow and scale their business. Throughout the series, we've talked about several aspects related to investment and to, to strategic partnerships, and recordings of all these webinars can be found on our YouTube channel, and you'll get a link afterwards. Today, we have a great story about how um, early stage startups can partner with utilities, uh, which will help utilities driving towards the transformation that they're all trying to make towards being a digital utility. Um, we have a great speaker lineup, which will be introduced shortly. But first, let's just go through the flow of the day and some housekeeping issues. But let me first thank all of our sponsors. This webinar series, and in fact, our programs at NECC have the invaluable support of the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, MassCC, and NYSERDA, which is the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Um, we work with both of them very closely to design and provide tailored programs and highly vetted opportunities to the clean tech community. We're very fortunate uh, to have several other sponsors and funders, including Commerce Rhode Island, National Grid, uh, Rhode Island Foundation, Roy A. Hunt Foundation, and Clean Energy Ventures. Our ultimate goal is to drive innovation and accelerate the clean energy sector in the Northeast. And it's an honor to have them all as partners. Thank you all very much. So here's the agenda for the day, which actually we're going to tweak a little bit, and I'll let Kristen, our moderator, explain that in a minute. Um, but it does leave uh, time for questions for you at the end, and we'll come back to how you do that in a second. So please start thinking about your, uh, your questions. Um, moving on to slide three, uh, um, I hope you can all see the slides. If you can't, please uh, comment on that using the chat or the Q&A will we'll investigate that. Um, we're recording the webinar, as I said before, and we'll share a link to that afterwards. Uh, and we'd also like you to take the survey, which you can see there's a link there, and we'll send it out in the email afterwards. But your feedback really helps us improve this series and um, help the uh, clean tech uh, ecosystem improve. Please note that everyone's muted apart from the speakers, and we will not unmute you. The only way you can ask questions is using the Q&A feature in Zoom to ask your questions. And then the moderator, Kristen, will um, pick the best questions to put to the speakers. So now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce our moderator today, Kristen Barbato, who is the CEO and founder of Build Edison. With 25 years in energy and sustainability, Kristen has served in executive roles spanning utilities, government, energy services, and consulting. Recently, she founded Build Edison, a company to help clean tech and energy services companies get to scale to commercialization faster. Build Edison provides advisory services, demonstration project implementation partners, go-to-market planning strategies, and a unique investment vehicle for clean techs, facilities owners, and energy investors. So with her experience running large operations, along with her tenure as both a provider and buyer of energy services, for utilities and commercial industrial companies and municipalities, such as being the Chief Energy Management Officer of New York City under Mayor Bloomberg. She has a broad network of experts and provides unique energy market insight to move strategies into commercial action. So a perfect moderator for today. Um, Kristen, I'll hand it over to you now and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so thank you so much for that nice introduction and welcome to all of our participants and as, as well as our panelists. Um, just to go over our agenda today, I'd like to walk through that for a minute first. And Alistair, if we could go back to that slide, I'll walk this, the audience through it. Um, as we noted, Alistair from NECEC, we thank you very much and your sponsors for putting on this presentation and webinar today. Uh, we have our panelists, 
that are going to be in a slightly different order, but they will. I'm going to give a brief introduction of each of them, and then they're going to give a, a presentation about their role and some of the uh, relevant experience that they have working in utilities and uh, with innovation projects. So we have first Jory McKenzie of Avant Grid. Second, we're going to go to Zach Pollock of Smarter Grid Solutions, then heading over to Steve Mannard from Simple Energy, and following with Oscar Cantaleo from Iberdrola Ventures. We will have um, some moderated Q&A that um, I'll be leading, as Alistair mentioned, and then we'll leave um, some time for audience Q&A, and then, of course, wrap up. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Drury first to give a presentation about Avangrid and their experiences with um, their uh, with both Smarter Grid solutions and uh, Simple Energy. But first, let me introduce Drury. She joined Ibadrola three years ago and is responsible for their Smart Grid innovation projects out of Rochester. Prior to joining Iberdrola USA, which is now Avangrid, she was an energy entrepreneur who worked in efficiency and new technologies to help advance clients' energy management and efficiency needs. Jury, thank you so much. And when we hand off to Zach next, I will introduce him. Great. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so I work for Avangrid Networks. If you could go to the next slide, Alistair. Perfect, thank you. So Avangrid, as Kristen mentioned, we most recently, um, up until about three years ago, were known here in the US as Iberdrola USA. We are now Avangrid, but still majority owned by Iberdrola. Um, and Oscar, my, my global colleague, will be sharing more information about what we do as a, a global entity as it relates to startups and, and investments. Um, so here in the US, Avangrid has a networks business and a renewables business. I work on the network side of our business. We have eight regulated electric and gas utilities um, in the Northeast, 3.1 million customers across four states and approximately $8.6 billion of rate base. Our renewables company develops and operates both wind and solar. Um, here in the US, we have approximately 60 projects and a total of 6.3 gigawatts installed. That does not include the, the future um, installation for our offshore wind projects that we have been awarded. Um, so that, that's still to come and very exciting. Uh, can you please move to the next slide? Thank you. So I'm in our smart grids group and specifically on the innovation team. We do a lot. It's very exciting and awesome work. Um, I'm here to focus on two specific um, not just projects, but really partnerships that we've had the um, privilege to participate in over the past few years. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, New York State and all that's happening with regards to REV, um, it, there's a lot, so I recommend you do some research. Um, but more specifically, the REV demo project. So Simple Energy is, is one of um, the, the, the smaller startup companies that we wanted to highlight. Um, that we think would be valuable for all of you other startups out there who are interested in finding ways to work with us, as well as I think you know working with other utilities as well. So we first started working with Simple Energy through a Rev demo project. Um, again, these are specifically just for our opcos in New York, specifically NYSEG and RG&E are the two that we have here in New York. And Rev demos are really focused on providing the the IOUs, um, investor-owned utilities, opportunities to test hypotheses to test new business models and all of which because they are funded by ratepayer money or you know our customers rates um, the majority of not only the the hypotheses that we're setting out to test but the measurements and lessons learned all become public so I really encourage you to try to navigate the Public Service Commission website to find not only in the implementation plans that were filed but the subsequent reports um, because there's there's just a ton to learn um, from the fact that this is this is for the public to also learn from. Um, so our opportunity with Simple Energy, as mentioned, started with one and then two Rev demo projects, really testing how we as a monopoly can leverage our our brand as well as our access to customer base to increase DER adoption, both from a, a product point of view with um, EE products as well as um, DER service connections. And Steve will give you more details on 
how we actually do that. Um, I think another important piece to note here of how we've worked with Simple and the expectation of Rev demos is uh, as it relates to new business models. And so it's not a traditional vendor relationship. Uh, it's what's called a market partnership. So we actually have a revenue share model. And I think that's really exciting because you know we're leveraging Again, our ability as, as a regulated monopoly um, to test out new functionality to serve our customers, but it's also a way for both parties to make investments and, and to be able to realize the benefits from those investments and testing out new, new ways to create value for our customers. Um, I think you know our lessons learned and our ability of value that we've also brought to Simple through this process is we've been working with them more, um, the part that I'm most participating most involved in is in our energy smart community. So it's really exposed them to this really dynamic ecosystem where we've made planning, um, grid ops, and customer market investments to kind of create our first mini DSP. We have smart meters, we have automated devices. So it's, it's given them an opportunity to be able to test out and learn as we are testing out and learning from these foundational smart grids investments. And, and through which also expose them to diverse stakeholders. We work with Cornell. We have a really strong uh, stakeholder engagement and customer engagement plan. So I think you know not only are we evolving and learning um, as as a utility, but it's given them an opportunity to to be exposed to that learning process as well. All of which is really focused on what is the benefit for the customer and and ad an additional value add that we've. Um, that we've experienced, but I think also shared with Simple has been, you know, how are we, as, a, as an organization, integrating different business units together. So I'm on the Smart Grids team. We work this, this platform that we've developed um, or implemented with Simple Energy. I think it's definitely done the development, um, you know, is, is within our customer service group, more specifically conservation load management. So I think that that cross-organizational integration has been a great opportunity for both parties. And if I think about kind of beyond what we set out to test and learn and prove as one original rev demo, which then became two, which then became an energy smart community application, which now, you know, Steve will talk to you about work that they're doing across all of our opcos, um, you know, are the people and processes. So, you know, how do we become that utility of the future? And by working with them, we've learned different ways of working on our own end as well. And we've also been exposed to the fact that we have certain processes that need to change to be able to implement such types of um, applications as well as to be able to more effectively create value for our customers. So we definitely have surpassed um, you know, the, the opportunity for us as a company to be able to learn as well as the value that we can create for our customers because of the nature of Simple Energy being a more startup, smaller company that, that really is at the forefront of, of driving the industry forward. Um, and in addition, we've been able to, because of their agility, test out additional functionality that we never even imagined, such as direct DR enrollment at point of sale, um, we'll be using targeted marketing based on AMI load analysis. So this flexibility has also allowed us to start to learn how to be more agile ourselves based on the fact that they can do that and that's just how they operate normally. Um, so that's simple energy and as mentioned, we've, we've learned so much and, and I think our customers have greatly benefited. Um, moving on to Smarter Grid Solutions, again, New York State, it started out as a REV demo project and um, which the, is flexible interconnect capacity solution. And so here, again, the same model, testing out new hypotheses, testing out new business models, all of the, the documentation um, is public for your, for your use. Um, so the hypothesis here is really about how can we use active network management to be able to um, control and curtail DERs depending on if they're going to go above the thermal or voltage threshold at the location and thus saving significant amounts of um, upgrade requirements that would otherwise have been used for firm capacity. So really, you know, how do we use this software tool to be able to increase the rate of DER adoption as well as the, the um, overall penetration of DER adoption? And from a business model point of view, are developers willing to pay for this service? which again is a fraction of what they would otherwise have to pay for for those firm capacity upgrades. Um, I think the opportunity that we're both 
learning from, both going from a small scale pilot to looking at, well, we're, how does this become business as usual? Um, recognizing the fact that this was not necessarily a technical demonstration, but more of a business model and process demonstration. And that ultimately, because there is a market component of this, there, there is a variable with regards to DER developers, and there is a certain element of risk that they bear and are having to learn more about because of the uncertainty of current tailment periods. And I'm sure Zach will chat more about that. Um, in many ways, it's not a risk that's realized from a financial point of view, but ultimately because it is at the forefront of, um, of how we will be able to actively manage DERs, there is that unknown currently. So the more we just need more projects to prove out the fact that there is little downside from a financial point of view. Um, what we've also learned through this process of working with them, going from a, a small scale pilot to looking at at scale, is really data. And I'm sure everyone has heard this before, but um, you know, one, we need the data, and two, we need it to be quality to be able to have this application at scale. So that is something that we're learning through this process, um, and it, it just is the reality for us to be able to um, be able to leverage this solution going forward. Um, I think you know, looking at scale, and you look at the DER um, overall state goals um, between. I, I don't have them off the top of my head. Apologies, but you know, this solution is going to have to become a norm if you look at getting to those penetration rates and the fact that it could save 10 to 50 percent of those interconnection costs. So recognizing that this is this solution is not going anywhere, and ultimately, you know, we need to be at the forefront of developing it as a viable solution, not only to most effectively manage our network, but also to most effectively serve developers and DERs um, becoming also the new norm. Um, and so through right. that, you know, again, yeah, sorry. Okay. I was just going to say um, thank you. That's a, that's a good segue into um, hearing from Zach and Smarter Grid Solutions. Uh, I just, sure. Sorry to cut you off, Terry. Just trying to make uh, just make the, the comment. No, that's awesome. No worries. Sorry. So, Zach, if I could introduce you. Thank you so much, Terry, for that introduction of Avangrid uh, Avangrid and the experience that you have. We're going to ask you more about those insights about how to work with utilities. But for right now, we're going to talk to Zach, who leads business development for Smarter Grid Solutions in the Northeast. He is a seasoned energy professional with extensive product, business development, research and advisory experience with specific focus on electric utilities and integration of clean technologies in distributed energy. energy. Um, he works with a lot of investor-owned utilities on the impacts and opportunities associated with DERs or distributed energy resources. Uh, so he is going to walk you through the Smarter Grid Solutions uh, project at Avangrid now. Thank you so much, Zach. Great. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Jerry, for inviting us on this call. So as Jerry mentioned, uh, I'll share a few insights and lessons learned from our flexible interconnect capacity solution project. Can you go to the next slide, please. So just a little bit about Smarter Grid Solutions. We are a distributed energy resource management software provider to primarily distribution utilities. We're also developers of DERs, and we play this sort of unique role in the industry where we're able to work across both sets of stakeholders to be able to uh, provide a solution that, that fits that gap in terms of actively managing the grid and getting additional capacity squeezed out of it. So we were actually established in 2008, and uh, you know most companies that were around back then, there, there are probably about a handful that you can count that are still left today. So we're very proud of the fact that we just celebrated our 10th anniversary. In North America, uh, we actually launched our uh, US business and North American business in 2013. The company was actually originally founded and spun out of the University of Strathclyde in Scotland. And some of our early backers were the university and one of the utilities over there as well. Uh, today, we have about 350 megawatts of distributed energy resources under real-time control. In the East Coast and New York specifically, we're working with four of the, the six distribution utilities within the state across three REV technology deployments and also working with Avon Grid today on multiple projects. Next slide. So just a little bit of background on the interconnection process because this is really where our solution fits in and ultimately what led us to, to partner with Avon Grid on deploying a solution which would test a new business model within New York State. So one of the, the good things, but also one of the challenges of working with utilities is that they're pretty predictable. You know, if you can take away nothing else from the, this webinar, it's the mantra of safe, reliable, affordable power. 
And when you're deploying solutions like ours, which touch the distribution system and need to uphold those characteristics, um, there's obviously quite a lot of criteria which govern the, the operation and planning of that system. So what you're seeing here in the slide is the traditional interconnection process, which when there's low penetrations and, and low applications of developers and customers to want to interconnect things like solar and wind and battery storage, um, there's a pretty inherent capability of the grid, just given the way the system is planned for, to be able to interconnect those resources. Where you start to run into some challenges, though, is as you move through the interconnection process of doing analyses and determining the ability of the, the distribution system to actually host these resources, um, and you start hitting higher penetrations on circuits and components of the distribution system, it leads to quite a bit of uncertainty. And that's kind of what you're seeing here on the end of the slide. So there are some instances where developers of projects may not be able to interconnect at all. Some instances where there are pretty significant capital costs uh, in terms of distribution system components that need to be upgraded before an interconnection is allowed. And occasionally in higher penetration systems, you might get lucky and you might be able to actually just interconnect without paying an additional cost. Next slide. So given that context, how do we get here today, both from an industry perspective and both working with the Von Grid? There are a couple of key changes which really think, uh, you know, speak to the opportunity and how it developed in terms of working with the Von Grid operating companies. Probably first and foremost is that we've seen traditional utility smart grid investments shift from being in front of the meter assets, so things like smart meters and distribution automation equipment, uh, to really start to encompass the, the preferences of customers and decreases in, in other technologies like distributed PV, uh, battery storage. So that encapsulation of customer preferences has been a big driver in platforms and technologies like the one that SGS provides today. Uh, but more importantly, and perhaps better speaks to the success of the, the project which we've done with Avangard is the fact that the evolution of customer preferences is now in fact driving greater collaboration uh, across stakeholders within the utility. So if you think of the interconnection process historically, that's been pretty siloed. The fact is today, and what's really being depicted here in the, the middle of the slide, is that there are multiple teams and stakeholders within the utility which need to be bought into a solution before it actually becomes scalable. So as Jury said before, we weren't really testing a technology solution, but really the ability to, one, test the business model, and also being able to scale it across the, the organization. So just a little bit of background specifically to Avangrid, how we were able to be successful in our earlier conversations. Um, it just so happened to help that we were already working with Scottish Power over in the UK. So one of the sister companies or operating companies within the Iberdrola family. Uh, there just so happened to be a regulatory reform known as Rev Brewing in New York, which happened to uh, speed things up quite a bit once that was launched in early 2014. So it was well timed with state level policy interventions and then more broadly, sort of external to the, the utility industry, um, there was quite a bit happening on the development side. So the federal investment tax credit was extended at the end of 2015, which led to some more certainty and an inrush of new developments for solar. Uh, and within the state of New York, given the state's policy goals and objectives, there's already quite a bit of solar in the interconnection queue for the distribution utilities here. Next slide. So how did that lead us to the flexible interconnect capacity solution? So again, we were really testing the business model of uh, developers willing to take a trade-off in, in uh, exchange for reduction of the upfront interconnection costs. So if you think of a traditional interconnection on the left from a, a project finance perspective, you're really taking the upfront capital costs of building the project, which today includes interconnection costs and in constrained areas can be quite substantial. And you're balancing that with the projected uh, revenues over the, the lifetime of the project. What we had proposed to Avangrid was actually going in and saying, well, what if we were able to you know, take some of those assumptions you guys have historically used in your interaction process and assume that we can actually uh, manage the grid dynamically in response to what's actually happening? We can be a little bit less conservative with that, which is what our technology does. And we'll be able to create a business model for developers where in exchange for a little bit of potential, although not guaranteed risk of curtailment and financial impact, we can significantly reduce the upfront capital cost of the project. And that's really what you're depicting here on, on the right side of the slide. So this idea of a flexible interconnection where you're not guaranteed firm capacity, but there's some probability around curtailment and, and potential impact to the project. So effectively, you're reducing the upfront capital cost of getting the project built and interconnected uh, for a potential, but again, not guaranteed reduction over the life of the project. 
So we've been fortunate to work with Avant Grid since 2015 on that specific project. Um, there are quite a few lessons learned from implementing this in, from the perspective of implementing a new business model. Uh, next slide. So just a couple of quick takeaways before we pass it over to Steve. Um, but really, since the beginning, we, we feel like we've been partners and been very fortunate to have the support of Avant Grid in that sense. Uh, you know, don't think of yourself when you're pitching to utilities or trying to implement a solution as a vendor, but really a partner. Um, we're not selling, uh, you know, a very replicable license-based um, type of application that you might see in other industries. So it, it really does take the buy-in and the partnership in, in terms of being able to be successful in projects and ultimately scaling. Let's talk to the second point a little bit. So scaling and commercializing technology is a much different challenge than scaling a business model. Um, we found that there were some challenges we hadn't accounted for. There were also opportunities that we identified through this process. But really the key takeaway is be proactive in terms of identifying ways and potential obstacles and scaling the business model when you're working with utilities. Perhaps most importantly, uh, more so than ever, especially in New York and parts of the Northeast, California, the, the door to influence policy and regulation is more open than ever today. And that was one of the really the key differences in working with Avant Grid. In the UK, we had actually worked pretty proactively with policymakers there uh, to influence and, and make active network management, which is our technology, accepted amongst the six distribution utilities there. In the US, it's a little bit different in that we have more than 3,200 utilities, so we had to be a bit more strategic about who we picked and which geographies we were gonna work with to, to target deployment of that technology. But nevertheless, the opportunity to do so exists from a regulation policy perspective. And then finally, I think the, the last key point here before passing it off is that utilities, as predictable and rigid as they can be sometimes, you know, with new technologies and new business models, they often do want you to drive. So that really speaks to, as a vendor, as a partner, you want to know your solution, you want to be prescriptive in that. There's always going to be utility criteria and requirements that you'll have to flex to, but having a, you know, firm stance on what your solution is capable of, how it might be deployed, what the business model looks like, is, is pretty key to just having that conversation in the first place. Great, thank you so much, Zach. That was really helpful, and those tips uh, I'm sure will be appreciated. And um, moving on to Steve with, uh, from Simple Energy. Uh, Steve Manard is the Director of Client Solutions at Simple Energy, and he has a background in management consulting, marketing, and business development. And he brings deep expertise in the power and utility industry with a focus on helping the industry become more customer centric, efficient, and sustainable. So. Steve's going to tell you a little bit about what their project with Avangrid was. Steve? Great. Yeah, thanks for having me on the call today. Really excited to, to be here and to, to talk a little bit about you know, working with utilities as well as working with Avangrid in particular. If you could jump to the next slide, please. So a little bit about Simple Energy. Simple Energy is a software as a service startup company based in Boulder, Colorado. And we were founded in 2011. And we, we came together around the mission to really motivate and enable people to take energy-wise action while helping utilities be part of the clean energy ecosystem. And doing that through a combination of different software applications and kind of data-oriented products and services that we provide to the utility to then provide to their end customers. So we are a B2B to C uh, company that focuses exclusively on the utility market uh, as them being channel partners to better engaging customers and transacting with those customers. Um, our solution set, which I'll talk about a little bit in the next slide, you know, spans all the way from deep customer engagement technologies and solutions from outbound marketing to customer engagement portals to advisor tools that help customers understand what is the right next step in their energy journey for them to transactional solutions such as utility branded marketplaces where utilities actually have a part of you know, creating a platform out of their brand data assets and channels to customers in order to better engage customers and actually sell them new products and services in new ways, which, which Drury mentioned previously. Um, so a little bit more about our company, you know, when, when we're working within these utilities, you know, our focus and you know, our big value proposition to them tends to be around you know, driving DSM or DER or customer program oriented goals, creating experiences that create deeper customer relationships and greater customer satisfaction and enable utilities to take that next step in their strategic journey towards becoming a utility of the future and evolving towards 
offering new product services and unlocking new business models within their, within their commercial structure. Um, we currently work with around 50 different utility partners and, and pride ourselves in being the number one provider of utility branded marketplaces um, with a track record of driving significant transaction volumes in a greater than you know, either utilities existing platforms or, or other players in the market through making the things simple and streamlined for the end customer while creating that great customer experience, which leads to net promoter scores of over 70% across all of our utility uh, deployed platforms. Next slide, please. So when you pull together all of our different solutions, you create a, a customer action platform. And so our platform consists of those customer engagement solutions that help engage customers in their energy journey, help motivate action and provide them with tools to better manage their energy consumption, all white labeled and brought from the utility to the customer under the Avon Grid brand or the National Grid brand or the, whatever the utility brand might be. We provide a whole suite of advisors that help customers really understand what their options are and to curate down you know complexity around which rate should I be on or how do electric vehicles work to offer them very targeted advisor types of solutions that provide them personalized recommendations uh, surrounding you know based on what their profile is and who they are and then finally you know we also offer a whole platform surrounding making transactions with the utility as simple and streamlined as possible whether that be through a utility branded marketplace or through providing an instant rebate experience at the point of sale uh, in a retail channel or at the point of service with a contractor installing a particular uh, product or service in the customer's home. Next slide, please. And so our work with Avangrid, Avangrid was one of our early partners with our, our marketplace solution um, and really helped us you know, mature that project. They helped in the incubation period as well as in the maturation of that of that product over the last three years that we've been working together. And it all started off with, as, as Drury mentioned, the Rev Demonstration Project, in which is a really great platform to work with utilities on innovative ideas that are mutually beneficial from a commercial standpoint, from a, you know, together bringing the market and different stakeholders together to innovate in the market to create new models of creating value across the board. And so our first project was the RG&E Marketplace, which was a, which is a operating company of Avangrid. It was a branded customer experience where customers could come to an e-commerce platform branded as Avangrid. They could shop for different products and services, things such as smart thermostats, lighting, uh, enrollment in different programs, and you know, be able to bundle those solutions together with an instant rebate validation process, um, which then helps customers realize an instant rebate at the point of sale. Um, that, that particular demonstration project quickly grew, and we worked with Avangrid to essentially evolve that into the ESC community project um, surrounding the ESC Smart Solutions Marketplace, where we essentially took the marketplace that we had currently and evolved it to the next level, amplified with AMI data to create a more personalized customer experience, coupled with the ability to offer additional products and services. So we served as a platform to help customers also connect with solar providers or home service providers through the platform in a very streamlined and bundled way, um, all offering a new revenue model for or Oven Grid, offering a new easy way to connect to different customers for the, the contractors and for customers to have simplified, streamlined, one-click experiences with all of the transactions that they're having with, with, with Oven Grid and with NYSEG in that case. The platform then quickly expanded, you know, as our product suite evolved and as Oven Grid needs evolved and we were testing and iterating upon the successes within the ESC, uh, the Smart Communities Project, it then evolved into the broader operating companies that uh, the NYSEG and RGME and Avangrid have with U UI as well as an, a NYSEG expansion. And so, you know, again, we we kind of worked slowly, we iterated, and then we quickly expanded into the rest of their territory with with the platform, where we now offer things such as instant rebates at the point of sale in any channel, whether it be through Lowe's, Home Depot, retail, or through the Avant Grid marketplaces that we now stand up and support. And so some of the lessons learned, if we could go to the next slide, that, that I can share with you guys having worked with utilities for 
I'm about 12 years in working with utilities and you know, in particular from our, our experiences with, with Oven Grid is for startup companies, utilities have tremendous assets that you can utilize and leverage um, to help really accelerate your solution as well as help it achieve their goals. And those really are their brand. They've got a really strong brand. They're recognizable to customers. And that is an enormous asset, you know, whereas you may be a startup without much brand recognition, it is a way and a, a way to be recognized and to get customers engaged in your particular solution. We have channels with customers that are pre-existing. They've been in two-way dialogues with customers and surrounding bills since their existence, you know, back hundreds of years ago. Um, they have robust data sets that can be used for advanced analytics to whether that be engage customers or optimize the grid or you know provide other benefits to the to the utility, that data stream that they have unlocks lots of value for um, for startups to essentially utilize to help leverage and achieve the utility objective. And then they have budgets. They've got things like incentives. They've got program budgets. They've got um, there's financial value to capacity that you're able to provide. And, and those assets, when they come together, really offer a, a great platform for you to partner with utilities and utilize them in, in the energy space in particular um, to then drive acceleration of your solution as well as the outcomes that they're looking to, to drive. You know, they, they do have an appetite. You know, there's a high need for change within the industry, and they've got a great appetite for innovation. And so, you know, in particular in New York, is a great place to test out those new products and services that, that you're offering. And it provides a really great path to scale your business. Um, once you're in the door with a utility, you know, and, and you're starting to work and iterate together, there's great opportunities for expansion across, those, across their platform, as I highlighted with our Oven Grid relationship. You know, the challenge is this is similar to what Zach was talking through you know, in terms of speed and agility. You know, you often have internal structures that are that are more challenging to to work through, and there's a risk aversion, you know, baseline type of a um, type of a culture that you need to work through. And so, I would say, you know, utilize and, and try to work with the utility assets as, as a as a key point. And you know, there's great opportunities with the utility's desire to invest, the desire to partner in win-win types of situations that you can bring to them. And you know, know that once you're working with a number of utilities and showing success, it's a fast follow market. So where success, where you have success in one place, it's easy based upon the you know, non-competitive structure of the, at least the regulated utilities to expand your platform across other utilities as well. Great, Steve, thank you so much. Those are really good insights. Um, and now, so now we're going to move on to, Alistair, thanks so much for moving back in the slide deck here in case anybody's getting confused. We're gonna mm -hmm. go back to, um, to pick up where Iberdrola fits in to this uh, whole scenario. And Oscar, and uh, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Spain today. And uh, he is going to tell us a bit about, uh, focus on how Iberdrola Corporate Ventures, called Perseo, focuses on uh, looking at new opportunities and working with new technologies. Oscar has a background in engineering and has developed his career in the energy sector while he has, and also joined Iberdrola in 2000. Since that time, he's worked in various areas and uh, different types of projects across the, the company. But in 2012, joined the fairly new cor uh, Iberdrola Corporate Venture Capital Program, which is called Perseo. And so he's responsible for new opportunities origination. So he's gonna focus on how, how Perseo looks at working with new technologies. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hello. Thank you, Christian. Hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, and we can go directly to the next slide. Just a brief introduction about Iberdrola. Uh, as Trudy said before, we are present in, in the U.S. with Avangrid, and then uh, the company is focused in three main areas. One is gener generation, mostly renewable, also networks, uh, and obviously retail with more than 34 million uh, customers uh, worldwide. So basically these are some figures for you to know as the presentation is going to be shared at the, at the end. Uh, we can go to the next slide directly to our approach in, in Brazil. So why uh, we founded this program? Why we work we work with the startups? Well, basically because 10 years ago we, we realized that we need to have an open innovation approach. We have to work with more 
providers than we uh, typically does. We typically uh, work with uh, big, big other big companies that are our suppliers. So we want to include in our ecosystem those small companies that are developing new technologies and new business models that can help us to improve our core business and also to create to create new opportunities. So we create the program then with uh, 70 million euros available to invest in startups and 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 the the, the goals were uh, mainly three uh, was to identify trends for for the future of the company see which technologies will be uh, interesting for us so will be interesting in the future and have a position there also to have access to new business models and new technologies and having access to this, uh, done in, in, in different ways that I will explain a bit later. And also and, and also very important for a company like Iberdrola to foster the innovation and, and, and create an entrepreneurial culture uh, that uh, obviously is more um, uh, you can find easily in a, in a small company. It's not so easy to find here in a big corporation. So we have been uh, working with these companies just with this vision to create new product and help Iberdrola to become the utility of the future. So next slide. So how we were with this with these uh, companies, with these small companies or startups? Well, we, we offer different things to these startups. One is to have access to our ecosystem, to have access to our uh, uh, knowledge, to our people, to be a one-stop shop for these companies. Obviously, in, in, in the cases that this is needed, uh, because as you can, uh, as you have seen, with really our business units, units are very active also in, 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 in this kind of uh, innovation, uh, innovative projects. So uh, we want to uh, to help the companies to look for the right people here at Iberdrola. If someone comes and say, I have this technology that can help you with that, we can look for the right person to see if this is suitable for us. Also, we deploy pilots and projects with this company. We have the, in our program the ability or the, the, the resources to finance these kind of pilots. And we can also provide uh, access to, to our data, access to our assets, our facilities to test these technologies and see if they are interesting, not from the not not for validating the technology, but for see if they are uh, suitable to create a, a new business model, so improve our business model with this kind of, of things. The third one is to establish partnership and commercial relationships uh, to become uh, not only uh, a, a partner to to deploy a pilot, but also to see if this is uh, this can uh, become in a, a stronger relationship, in a long term relationship with these companies. And finally, we have the uh, we have the option to invest in the, in those companies that we think are really interesting. Uh, some uh, some tips about that: we typically invest in the first round that we participate. That typically are around A or B. Around, uh, uh, in between one and three million euros, and then in the follow-on rounds, we can do with a uh, with a higher ticket, with a bigger ticket, if it is needed. So, as you can imagine, in the US, we typically co-invest with other corporates and with uh, busy funds, and this is basically the way that we do. Uh, in next slide, what I would like to show you somehow very briefly is our vision, and this has changed during these ten years. At the beginning, we were very focused on hardware. And now we really focus on those solutions that have more uh, software and less hardware. What we have seen is that hardware is becoming more and more uh, a commodity. We can we have seen how uh, solar PV, batteries, wind, uh, drones, sensors, everything is uh, is being commodity. It's been cheaper and and it's uh, very accessible. Uh, but when you apply digital technologies to this hardware you can configure new business model, new application, or improve our current uh, our current processes. So we are really focus uh, in those areas that um, that are uh, defining new applications uh, in the energy sector that can help us to improve whatever. Specifically, everything related with digital. Our company has announced, I think, some months ago. 
plan to invest five billion dollars during the next three years in digitalization and we want to be part of that digital strategy working with uh, small companies and not only with big uh, providers and finally next in next slide uh, what i try to show you is uh, some figures about our program uh, you can see here the four um, points that i mentioned before uh, the companies we more or less see 250 companies every year we keep these companies in our radar so we Sometimes don't work with them the first year, but we can do it later. Also, we de deploy about between 10 and 20 pilots every year with these companies, uh, typically financed by our program. And also, we have created some business relationship with some companies, and we are, have already invested, of course, in, 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 in some companies. Now, currently, we have 10 companies in our portfolio. 60% of our companies of our portfolio companies are based in the US uh, and, and the other 40% is based in, in Europe. So we are very active there also in the US and we are more than happy to receive any opportunity that you can send us uh, through, our, through, our, through, through our program, through, through our business units or direct, directly through our, uh, our corporate VC. So, Oscar, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I wanted to make sure that we kept a little time for some of the questions we had in there. Oscar, thank you so much. I know that that's very valuable information because part of the, um, the allure of working with utilities as evidenced by these really fantastic case studies that we've just reviewed is that there is so much reach and so many resources available for what the uh, working with collaborating and integrating with the utilities that their customers can can do not only that but uh, shaping the, the solutions for customers but also shaping how the companies themselves work so I see that we've got a couple of questions from the audience coming in already I'm going to get to those in a moment I first just want to ask a couple of questions very quickly of our panel regarding some mm -hmm. of these areas that they've just explored so I'll open this up to everybody I'd like um, whoever would like to jump in on this question um, one, one area that's of particular interest, I think, for thinking about utilities and innovation. I, it's typically not an area that people have thought of where utilities are being innovative, but um, I have to say in my own experience and what we're seeing here today, there really is quite a lot of traction in working in innovative areas. We also have a few different countries represented on this phone call with these case studies today. So my question to the panelists is, can you describe a couple of things, uh, a couple of aspects of how, how to engage with utilities? I know we talked about pilots, we talked about some of these investment collaboratives, but the timeline for some of these procurements, especially for startups, can be very arduous and difficult. So how can we expedite some of this engagement with um, utilities for new technologies? Anyone on the panel? Well, uh, in my opinion, uh, that's true. I mean, uh, utilities and specifically big corporations are not very uh, agile on that. What we have tried to uh, create to solve these kind of things is this approach where we can do pilots, we can uh, establish partnerships, and we can invest in companies and not using the uh, procedures of our company. So we can be more agile than, 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 the, than our business units. We have mm -hmm. a specific programs for that, and we try to avoid this uh, time, uh, you know, time lag between we meet a company and we do a, something with them uh, as much as possible with these kind of things. Obviously, it is not enough for, for a startup because uh, we are still a, a corporation, but it's something that, I, in my opinion, helps to uh, you know to reduce these times yes thank you uh, but Steve and Zach what has been your experience in engaging with utilities and 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 the mechanisms by which you have been successful yeah and I, I would just add in on the tactical side like you need to get an audience with the utility and the best way to get an audience with the utility is you know kind of through referral from a utility you're already working with if you don't have the utility you're already working with then it's it's really coming around what from a thought leadership perspective, can you bring to the table in terms of how they could do something differently to, to provide more value to 
achieving their goals in a more cost-effective way. And in that in that case, you know, that is that's marketing, that's conferences. Those are ways in order to tactically get an audience with the utility to start you know, pitching your vision and and showing them kind of a mutually beneficial value proposition as a couple tactical things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Absolutely agree with both those comments. I think for me, the, the one that hasn't been said is really just de-risking it from a utility perspective. So there's operational risk. There's all sorts of ways around that. So for example, we, we have our own R&D facility in New York and Glasgow where we're able to get the input of our utility customers in shaping and testing products. We also do that with industry partners. And then there's more sort of the, the financial and uh, overhead risk for utility where if they're going to devote resources of their own to helping you implement a project, um, there are ways to, to supplement or augment that risk for them. Uh, we've done quite a few projects with organizations like NYSERDA. I think all of those play critical parts in, in early stage projects and early stage companies. That's a really good point. Um, and so, Steve, as you, I'm sorry, um, Oscar, as you were talking about how to engage in helping with the initial uh, mm -hmm. stage, maybe even financing, I'm going to talk to or ask Drury, you're really on the implementation stage. So how how can companies de-risk their projects for you on the implementation stage to be something of a, an advantageous relationship? Um, well, I think to work with our existing channels and needs. So there's RevConnect in New York. That's a process that's already established. It's a platform. It's where we are expected to go as well as the other utilities. They have various sprints. Um, so I would encourage people to go through that process. It allow it facilitates uh, startups to better understand who we are as a utility and what our needs are. I would also recommend you know, that the startups look at what our DSIPs, our distributed system implementation plans are, so they can understand what our overall strategy is and understand where we're going over the next five years. We have non-wires alternatives. We're going to have a non-pipes alternative. As mentioned, there's the Rev Connect demo. So I think there's a lot of existing channels that are already established with very clear needs, but with flexibility as to how the, the vendor, the startup, offers us the solution as well as who they may partner with on the financing side. It could be NYSERDA through a pawn that Zach mentioned that they led but we participated in and with there was three two other partners in it. Um, there's the New York Green Bank. So I think in my mind, you know, from a de risk point of view, look at what we've already stated our needs are, what mm -hmm. the existing channels are, and then find the right partners to bring us a full solution. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm also seeing in some of our questions from the audience, which I was going to ask anyway, so I'll just address it now. Specific to Perseo at, at Iberdrola and the, the, the Ventures arm and Avangrid, aside from RevConnect, aside from Green Bank, how is there a way that some of these audience members can connect with you directly for Perseo funding aside from NYSERDA, or how do they get considered to be part of the Ventures program? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, yes, because I didn't include my, my my contact details in the presentation, but I'll do it before you send it to the audience, so they okay. will have their our our contact. Uh, we are uh, come out, we are open the whole year, so there is no time uh, that uh, you know you have to send us the proposal. You can send us the proposal whenever you want, and and you can just send an email. We will check and, and see and analyze the proposal, contact you, we can arrange a call, and then we start a process uh, to see which is the area where this uh, this can fit, and see which is the path to, you know, to define a pilot or, or, or whatever, because the, this is not a process where we have to do first a pilot, then a, a, a partnership, and then an investment. This is, can be direct, directly go to the investment side. This can go to the pilot and then uh, we realize that this is not for uh, go ahead with this. So this is something very flexible, and 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 yes, uh, send us an email, and, and 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 that's the way to start the process. Well, that's fantastic, Oscar. I think uh, looking at some of the interest from the audience, you're going to uh, be a very popular person getting some emails. So uh, looks like people are are interested in, as you know, because you have done this, pilot projects as well as co investment. So thank you very much for those inquiries and um, and your your contact information for that. Um, mm -hmm. Another another question that I see from um, the audience here is uh, 
regarding again for the utilities and i also think that this will relate to both our um, clean tech panelists as well as the utilities are evolving in terms of how what types of connectivity they have and their supply of power uh, specifically as it relates to transportation are you seeing that there is some relevance for how you're engaging with what you're looking um, in terms of new technologies in the transportation sector electrified mm -hmm. transportation that is uh, well uh, as is the draw that we are active in this space so we have uh, we are developing infrastructure charging infrastructure and we are becoming a, 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 a a service provider for 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 that in in some countries here in Spain in Spain for example also in UK and in some other places so we are interested in those technologies and and business models that can uh, arise around this this uh, around trans electric transport transportation electrification is something that we are really interested in and this is something that we are uh, doing pilots nowadays and we have the strategy to install for example here in spain more than twenty-five thousand charging stations so during the next three years so it's something in our past and uh, as a company and uh, obviously it's uh, something that could uh, could uh, provide a, a, a new uh, core business for Ivedrola. so really interesting to know about any technology that can help us to become a, a, a electric mobility leader Great, great. So the answer is definitely yes. The utilities and Iberdrola specifically are looking at opportunities and technologies in terms of uh, electrified transportation solutions and how that mm -hmm. is uh, growing. Uh, another question mm -hmm. that I'm going to pick up on is a, a specific to Steve at Simple Energy. Your customer action platform it, does that serve commercial customers as well as uh, some of the others that you've engaged with? Yeah, great question. That serves mostly residential customers, but can okay. also serve small business customers um, mm -hmm. for, you know, on behalf of our utility partners. So it's all white labeled as the utilities. Got it. Got it. Great. Okay. So the utilities use the simple energy platform for the residential engagement and small business engagement primarily as they as as suits their needs best for their region yep correct okay great um i've got some other questions in here regarding um the the just the tactical alistair the webinar is going to be available for viewing afterwards correct yes Kristen, that's correct we will um we're recording it now, we'll edit it, and it'll be out sort of early next week sometime, and it will join all the rest of the webinars on our YouTube channel. But we'll send an email to all of the attendees, um, so they'll see that and see the link there. Fantastic, thank you so much. And um, as, as we've addressed a lot of the questions that came in from the Q&A thus far, I just want to ask the panelists if they could leave us with one thought uh, about their innovation experience when in working with their clean tech partner or the utility that was something unexpected that became a positive experience like what what's something that you would leave with our audience to think about you know you didn't expect this but wow this really was a, a benefit in having worked with uh, this project why don't we start with uh, Steve or Zach from the clean tech's perspective Sure, happy to jump in there. I think utilities often get painted as, you know, black and white relationships with vendors. And it's been really refreshing and rewarding to be able to work with a partner like Yvonne Grid, who's been so collaborative and supportive in, in developing uh, both our product and, and working towards common objectives across the state of New York and elsewhere. Perfect. Yeah, uh, I think you're I think you're exactly right. The uh, the the idea behind the, the concept of utilities has been very black and white, but um, what we're seeing now is a definite trend and movement to them opening up and understanding more of the customer experience and what that means for technologies to and solutions to um, serve it. Anyone else want to jump in with a last thought on um, uh, an yeah. unexpected positive experience or, or a, a something that happened through these um, these pilots or others? 
Yeah, certainly. I mean, I'd say take a collaborative approach and a partnership oriented approach with utilities would be, you know, one last thing thought that I would share. You know, I found that utilities, you know, are more than willing to iterate upon and provide great feedback on your product and solution, which, you know, is is really helpful and beneficial as you're building out your as you're building out your platform. So instead of thinking about it as I'm providing this to a utility, it's what are we creating together and creating that kind of cultural relationship there. You know, that's really where we found a lot of value and, you know, something that can be looked over as a, as a vendor to this industry. Yeah, just a quick add to what Steve is saying. I think if you, if you go and pitching a solution, that's the fastest way to get a utility stakeholder to, to tune out from a meeting. So really going in looking for advice, mm-hmm. looking for ways that they can contribute um, to, to your ultimate uh, plan or execution. That's the fastest way to get somebody engaged and interested in what you might be providing as far as a solution. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drury and Oscar, last thought on um, a, a really positive yeah. or unexpected takeaway. Well, I guess, you know, I think just for everyone to be clear that, you know, we are large and we have a big reach, but we still need to measure benefit, benefit for the network and benefit for our customers. So ensuring that, you know, as you see us as your potential channel to a large contract or to a large amount of customers, you know, we still have to be very diligent with our customers' money. You know, we're spending their, our ratepayer base. And ultimately, you know, we are there to continue to serve safe, reliable, um, cost-effective, you know, electricity in our case on the network side. So, you know, I think it's important that is still our, our primary focus as we need to test out and evolve and innovate. So, you know, the more our startup partners can understand that's where we're also coming from, I think um, the more that we can all quickly, you know, be aligned and move forward to finding solutions. Excellent point. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the, the more the solutions can help your customers at the utility, the better it is for the market. Oscar, any last thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my last thoughts and, and just uh, an idea, an idea based on, on our experience. We have evolved a lot during these years uh, working with the startups. I think we have changed a lot. We have a very good experience working with them. We have very successful uh, projects and then, then uh, many of them have become our partners so I will uh, encourage to everyone to contact uh, if they have something that they think could be interesting. Obviously as, as Julie said we will check somehow if this is interesting from the business per- perspective and sometimes when we decided not to go ahead it's not because it is not uh, interested uh, in, in, in general is because it's not interesting or doesn't fit in, in our strategy. But uh, anyway, any idea that can help uh, help us, we will analyze it, analyze uh, deeply uh, for sure. Well, thank, thank, thank you so thank much you to all the panelists. Oh, a little back feed there. Uh, to the panelists and also to the audience members, I know we went a little bit over, but I, I, I felt like uh, you guys had some really great questions. I wanted to work them into the conversation. Um, the webinar will be available uh, to all that participated. And I, I think what, one thing that I took away from this discussion is that um, it's very interesting to me how both the, the clean techs and their solutions in working with as partners to the utility um, can both uh, help their, the utilities' customers, and the utilities and the clean techs themselves can both be impacted in how they meet the market together. So, um, what that that actual culture change is, and how we're driving change in the market through these uh, these demonstration and other types of investments. Um, I think that's about it, Alistair. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll kick over to you for any other last tactical. Well, I just wanted to thank you, Kristen, for doing a great job moderating the panel and bringing out some great questions and uh, teasing out those great thoughts. Um, and I'd just like to echo uh, your thanking the, the panelists uh, for really sharing their insights, giving great examples of case studies of partnership and innovation. And again, I'd just like to thank our sponsors for helping us uh, make this happen in the first place. So particularly NYSERDA and, and uh, Mass Clean Energy Center. So um, we have to wrap up now, but it's been a great hour. Um, And as uh, we've said, we will be sending out uh, an email with a survey today and then with the the recording of the webinar. And we'll make sure, Oscar, that we do share your contact details so you'll get lots of emails. Thank you all very much and happy holidays.